This episode is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Do you ever find yourself playing the budgeting game? Well, with a Name Your Price tool from Progressive, you can find options that fit your budget and potentially lower your bills. Try it at Progressive.com. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Price and coverage match limited by state law. Not available in all states. Hey everyone, welcome to Kill Me Now with Judy Gold. I am your host, Judy Gold, and this week we have part one of my live podcast, my interview with Modi. Yeah, it was just on, but we never finished our conversation because we both had a hard out. And so we decided to finish it live at the Midnight Theater. And it was an epic night and it was sold out. And you are going to really, really enjoy it. I know a lot of you will be in the car, traveling and airports. Um, I think you're really going to enjoy it. I think it's, you know. Uh, Also, while I have you, while I have you in the beginning, before you just turn it off, um... I want to let you know that on uh, on Christmas Day, uh, which is very, 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 very soon, I will be doing a very Judy Christmas at Stand Up New York, uh, which is in New York City. So if you hate your families or you're just like you need to get the fuck out or whatever, you know, please. Come to Stand Up New York. I'm trying to look up exactly what time it is. I think it's the doors open at six. And there are plenty of Chinese restaurants around there. I think that I thought they were going to bring in China. There's one right across the street, Cottage, which is great. Um, but it's going to be a great show. Liz Glazer's on the show, who I just worked with. And and um, we just did a show. Uh, she did. She, John Fish, and I at the South Orange Performing Arts Center, another sold out show, which was fantastic. And, you know, it's amazing because, as you know, I'm Jewish and Jews are showing up in droves to comedy shows because we need to laugh. It is a coping mechanism, one that we have used for uh, thousands of years. So, listen, if you can't stand your family, if you just need to get the fuck out and laugh, if whatever. December 25th. I think the doors open at seven. I'm trying to, it's not in my calendar. I don't know why. Uh, anyway, so that's December 25th. Please come. It's going to be a lot of fun. Also, uh, want you to know that I will be at City Winery in New York on January 12th, and then City Winery in Philadelphia on January 13th. And I know it is Martin Luther King Day, the 15th, and I always get booked on holiday weekends and people go away. So it's uh, you better get your asses there. And then uh, January 19 and 20, I'm at Off Cabot Comedy Club in Beverly, Massachusetts. So there's places for you people to come see me, okay? So I'm just letting you know, get your asses out there. What else did I have to tell you? Uh, yeah, Hanukkah's over. Um, Christmas is coming. The goose is getting fat. Please to put a penny in the, uh, New Year's is coming. It's Elise's birthday, New Year's. Um, but, and we still continue on with this, uh, rampant, inexcusable anti-Semitism misinformation, horrible, horrible shit going on in the Middle East. It's, it's terrible. We have to destroy Hamas because they are the enemy. That's all I have to say. I mean, you know how I feel. None of us want any innocent people dying, but the anti-Semitism is what, and I was thinking about it, you know, you think about a lot of the holidays. There's one line during the Passover Seder, which is, uh, you, you know, you need to, I don't know what the exact line is. It's something about you are going to act as if you were the one who 
was freed from Egypt. And, you know, we have all these holidays that are, a lot of them celebrate that we've overcome oppression of people trying to kill us or, or exterminate all of us. And we won and then we eat, you know, it's a joke. It's a joke, but you know what? I was thinking about it. It's happened in generation to generation has dealt with anti-Semitism, and it's our turn. It's our turn and it's a terrible situation, but we're going to survive. We're going to survive. Uh, we've like, we survived before. We didn't know that this was going to fall on our shoulders. We didn't know how, um, but it never went anywhere and it's apparently not going anywhere and it's our turn and we're going to do great. Just like all the people before us, we're going to do it. So that's all I have to say. I'm trying to be positive. I, I'm just, I'm thankful for all of you. I'm thankful for you listening. I really hope you enjoyed th this week's podcast. I hope you have a very Merry Christmas. I don't know when Kwanzaa is, but I hope you have a happy Kwanzaa, whatever, whatever holidays you celebrate. I just want everyone, I want there to be peace, peace, peace in my house too. Like I don't want anyone fighting in my house. You know, we don't fight that much anymore. We used to fight old. Every time I would ask my mother what she wanted for her birthday, uh, when we were growing up, I, she would say, all I want is peace in this house. I want you kids to get along. Well, I want, I want the world to get along. So there we are. Thank you for listening. Uh, sit back right now, or if you're driving, don't sit back, look straight ahead and, uh, enjoy part one of my conversation with Bodhi. Welcome, everyone. I'm Judy Gold. This is Modi. It's the most wonderful, wonderful time, time of the year. year. This is all we've been singing in the back. Yep. It's the most wonderful, wonderful time, time of the year. Like, why did she bring Seth Rudetsky on? Oh, that's funny. Listen, let's go through all the Christmas songs right oh, now. Everyone written by... A, a Jew. Jew. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'm dreaming of a white Christmas. Christmas. I thought Just you went to like cantorial school. I, used to, I don't know what any of these songs. Oh my God, can I tell you a funny, quick, funny yeah, story? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Uh, so, as you know, there's a war. And, what? Um, there's a war. Yes. And I've been doing fundraisers, and at the, and the end of the show, I sing Hatikva. And we were doing this fundraiser for Hatsala, and I brought on this member of Hatsala and somebody that was at the in the kibbutz, and it was a whole sad thing. And then I sang Hatikva, and then the woman turns to me and goes, and now the Star Spangled Banner. No. So I go, who's singing that? She goes, <laughs> you. And I said, oh, and they just, the DJ hits the, the track, and I have no, I, I know any of the words. And my husband comes forward and goes, and the rock, and I'm, I'm like, and her sister's name Blair. And, and they paid the mortgage so we can all live there. I didn't know any of the words. I felt so bad. I went home and learned it. That's how bad I, I felt. Oh, I my live in America. God. I didn't know any You're of the like words. Trump. He didn't know the words either. <laughs> Remember, he was doing that. that yeah, yeah. He, yes. he doesn't know the words either. Oh, my God, that must have been awful. It was so weird. I made it up. But like, you moved here when... I just you... did, I did my, my, my half Torah. <laughs> you moved here from Tel Aviv when you were seven. Okay, you make it like as if I got my paperwork together no, and left. No, 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 no. My parents you moved would, here. Okay, you were moved here when you were seven with your parents. Yes. Okay, you were not escaping anywhere. Okay, but... <laughs> <laughs> you would think you would know the Star Spangled Banner. We had to sing it. All I remember is I pledged into the flag of the United States of America for which it stands. Oh, I forgot that one, too. Oh, my God. I'm horrible, and I love America. Not that much. I, um, I have to learn it. So, uh, Modi, I, there's a lot to talk about tonight. There's a lot to talk about. But I have, so, all right, I have my little note, my trusty little notebook here. We talked a lot about you growing up on the last podcast. Yes, about, yes. Uh, One of the here. best interviewers on podcasts, by the way. Oh, Moni. One of the best. She was organized. She hit. She didn't ask questions, like schleppy questions. So How'd you, you get started yeah. in comedy? Where did you get your material from? Who are from? your influences? Yeah. 
You people better lighten up. I, You're I not laughing those that much. That I answer those questions. Who's your favorite? Like, Adolf Eichmann. That's who. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I just throw them off. When they give you a horrible question, give them a horrible answer. I can't say. This is the worst. Uh, tell me a little bit about what it's like being a woman in comedy. I'm like, shut the fuck <laughs> oh, up. I used to say, how would I know? Uh, Oh, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna do yeah, that. I, exactly. Just how would I? Yeah. It's really bad. I hate. I hate bad interviews. Anyway, um, what <laughs> we learned about you on the first podcast was that you never intended to be a comedian. Ever. Uh, you never intended to be a performer. Period. You didn't even realize that you were a talented singer until you auditioned for Fiddler on the Roof in high school. Right. And yet you were obsessed with the conservative. Uh, canter at your local synagogue. Is that correct? You would go... Yes. Uh, and something drew. So when you went to college, uh, you... Wait, I have it here. Don't even tell me. Do not tell me. When you went to college, you majored in psychology and voice. Yeah. Uh, and then ended up working at Merrill Lynch. Correct. <laughs> a nice Jewish boy. That's what you do. Now, when I, you know, I had been around a while and you had just started, and I, I do remember you vividly. You would come into the clubs in, in a suit, the, in the most beautiful, gorgeous suits, Armani suits. Yeah, and we're all like, "Oh, I'm gonna like have cold every, sesame noodles like for they dinner." Out of yeah, a hamper. they all just like came out of a hamper. Hi, good to be here, and I'm like killing it. Kill, I killed you, it. You killed it. In the look, not, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, not on stage. No, no, I was I, good. I was good. I was so over the top up front. Oh my god! In the beginning, you would just scream. You, but you were yeah. so into it. You I would were do so these over the top characters and just accents and and uh, and. Uh, What's I, the most? All right, this is a bad question. All material I could not do today. By right. the way, thank What's you so much. What's the most embarrassed, like embarrassing bit that you would never do today? Just. Oh the well, you can't even say Oriental anymore, can you? No, unless you're referring so to you salad dressing or a rug right. or something. So I can't yeah. even talk about. I can't even yeah. talk about what I. But it was a different time. It was 1994, five right. when I started. Yeah. Baruch Atah Hmm. What the fuck? <laughs> That's it. Wait. So I there's. I always a, make a blessing before I drink or eat. Is that true? Always. 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 What, do you think that's an OCD thing, or you think that's I, a... I think it's... No, it's not OCD. It's such an amazing little thing to just... I just... Did you see what happened? A lovely young woman just came and gave me a cup of coffee. It's... It's Mashiach energy just happened right in front of your face. I just got a coffee that I requested before coming on. Don't look at me like that. No, I'm just thinking about how I asked for water and I didn't get shit. So <laughs> they, um, gave you, they gave you a Jericon. Uh, uh, what are you, a Jericon? Uh, oh, there, a Fiji underneath. How do you say Jer who's Israeli here? Just caught Jericon. That's okay, I don't want the Israelis acting like you're better than us, like you always do. <laughs> you know, like Ben, my son Ben did the uh, Maccabee games last yeah. year, and they're like, Maccabee, Maccabee, and it's really annoying where you think you know everything and you don't, okay? So, you, wow, that's really an interesting game. thing. That's an Wait, can I tell you a quick funny story? Yeah. One time I took, when my, my, my husband Leo comes with me to events, so we're doing a fundraiser for a school in Long Island, and, and he's like looking around, they're, they're raising millions of dollars, and everybody looks like, you know, Van Cleef, Rolex, Audemars, gorgeous. And he's like, what are they raising money for? And he's, I'm like, I don't know, they have sports. And he goes, they play sports, their kids? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yeah. He goes, are they any good? I said, yeah, when they play against other Jewish kids, yeah, they're exactly. very good. Exactly. They're playing against PS33 in right. Harlem. They're not going to be very good in... Well, yeah. I don't know if you knew that the uh, Maccabi games now, <laughs> one of the most competitive... Uh, what? One of the most competitive... Maccabi, the way you just... The Maccabi games. What, one of the most competitive sports, they actually have an accounting... Um, <laughs> you have to do a tax return in under 30 minutes, and it's, like, really complicated. It's corporate, personal, it's the whole thing. Is that a bit of yours? It's yeah, I do, I do that. Awesome. Like that. Oh, God. So, I find that interesting. I find that that is a, you know, look, we have a very OCD religion in a lot of ways. Like, I feel like, tell me if I'm wrong, which I'm sure you will, but people who are overly... Like the Hasidim, 
Okay, and the Lubavitch, and and what are those ones who hate Israel that stand there with? Turek Yeah, I, what the fuck is wrong with them? They're getting money from 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 uh, from Iran. Oh, they look like Hasidim, right? And they they but they are getting money from Iran, so they and they they just to say that Israel shouldn't exist. And That's, do they practice Judaism? Yes, they do. And then, but they just run around saying Israel shouldn't exist until the Messiah comes, and we all know that Mashiach is here. Right. We, Mashiach is here. We just have to create the energy that that like that coffee, and you know. <laughs> yes, Mashiach is here. Okay, so um, I always feel like people who are that religious, like where every you know every little thing, um, you know. I know these are basic things, but you know, I, I'm uh, I broke both of my legs, but I'm not going to take the elevator because it's Shabbat. You know, like that whole thing. Yeah. Okay. I'll wait for a goy to come in and press the button and whatever. Okay. Right. right. Yeah. And and I think that all that kind of behavior where I have to follow every rule also translates to why people are in those culty cults. I think right. they're cultish. Translates into the fact that they're not open. To other other life styles, I hate that that word, but they're they're uh, they're taught what to think. They don't want to think on their own. They want to say, okay, uh, this person is this. What does my rabbi think of this? What does my priest think of this? What does my religion say about that? Okay, that's what I think about it. Don't you agree? It's a lazy way of. I don't think Judaism is lazy. It's I funny. don't. It's, 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 I think it's, it's a, a thinking person's religion. It's but. funny. I have a new bit that I'm working on. Is this, is this recorded? Are we re- yes, it's recorded. Oh, so never mind. I'm not doing it. Um, no, it's not recorded. <sighs> First of all, I, I, every Jew is the diff- in his own way. Is, some of them are born into this situation, and they grow up, and even they have to dress the whole thing, and they get married, and now they're working for their father-in-law, and you can't judge them. You can't... Oh, I can judge them. Yeah, but, but where's that going to get us? No, no. I, I'm just saying there are people who... Instead of following their gut or what they really feel, what they do is they decide, well, I, I can't like you or I can't talk to you because I disagree with th- this about you uh, because that's what my religion says. I, I, I don't come across that as much as you do, I guess. I don't know. I perform for people who know I'm gay. I perform for Hasidic organizations where this is machitza. There's the men on one side, women on the other. I, I and really, the guy yeah. literally says to me in Yiddish, before I get on stage, kick the Eugen from the vibe Don't look at don't look at the eyes of the women when you're doing the comedy. So I'm standing there and the wall is here and I'm doing the show like this, angled to the men, and not looking at the women section. And oh you God. do that. They pay amazing. Right. They cut that checks. Is that is what are I insane. don't see. That is the difference between you and I. She'd be up there in a heart not, no. beat, not looking at any. I no. promise you. I promise you. No, you ask would. My, my son is here. My son is here. Where's my son, Henry? He'd make you Henry, do it. Henry, would be, I do yes, it? Yes, I need a new car. Would I do it? Oh, Thank shut you. up, Good Henry. Good for you. Good for you. That is not true. And you're making Jews and laugh. And also, let me tell you something. It's good coffee. You should. Oh, I want some coffee. You should. <laughs> May I please have some coffee? It's only 7.30. 8 o'clock's my limit. All right, but no. But but seriously, you should be looking at the guys. Because, I am. I mean, you should be looking at the women. Why? Because you're th- you're not attracted to the women. So, but that, blah, 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 blah. That's why I said when I get patted down at the airport, it should be like a gay guy patting me down. By the way, they pat you down so hard now. I literally oh my came God. on the guy's arm the other day. <laughs> I literally, no, where's Leo? Where's, where's my husband? They were in his crotch. They were literally like in his. Oh, they do that to me. They go right in. Right in. Yeah. I hate that. This week's episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. Now, you know, I am a huge advocate for therapy. I talk therapy. I like physical therapy too, but you know, I'm talking about talk therapy. I've been in therapy since I'm 18 years old. There is nothing better, nothing, nothing better. And it is a stressful time. You know, we just had an election. It's the holidays and we're going to have to spend uh, family time or not spend family time. It's a decision you might make. 
in therapy because therapy is really the best way, the only way to process your feelings, anxiety, depression, everything. I've been doing it for over 40 years. I know what I'm talking about. So if you've been thinking about starting therapy, if you thought about it for years and just didn't do it, please give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online. It's designed to be convenient. It's flexible. It, they, it's suited to your schedule. You you go to betterhelp.com slash Judy Gold. You fill out a brief questionnaire. You get matched with a licensed therapist and you can switch your therapist any, at any time for no additional charge. I've done that multiple times in my life, switch therapists. It is, it works. It works. And I know a lot of people who have used BetterHelp and they love it. So find comfort this December with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com dot com slash Judy Gold today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Judy Gold. You're welcome. You, I have, I have talked to you extensively about when you came out, how you came out. And, you know, there is this sort of thought like, okay, so I came out very early because I had Henry. Henry was born and I had all this material and I just- I was at his bris. Yes, you were. Yes. Just don't um, think we just met. But- We know each other. I was, I was like one, one, I think the first to come out in the mainstream clubs. There were many gay right. comics who were out, but I had been working only in the mainstream clubs at this point. Uh, came out as a gay parent, and it definitely had an effect on my career. And I knew all the comics that were who were gay, you know, who were working in the street, who were in the closet. And I never judge. I don't judge. You know, it's their time, whatever your time is. But you were a different. You weren't really in the closet when we were all hanging out. Like we all knew. Uh, but you did have. Sometimes you did have a girlfriend. I had here and there. Uh, but I was m m mostly gay. The comics all knew I was gay. Right. And at the table, at the comics table at the Comedy Cellar, which is like just recentering some, you know, and they all knew I was gay. But on stage, my material wasn't gay because it's, it, my material was Jewish. Right, was, same, it, yeah, same. And even now, my material, when I start doing gay material, it's, it's more about being married to a millennial than right. it is about being gay. You know, so it's not... Uh, it's right, so, it, it, you know, for me, you know, I came out on stage uh, when I when Henry was born, and, and be I came out because of him, but it was precisely because of him that it made it easier for me to come out because people were more open to hearing about me being a gay parent and all the stuff about, you know, rather than, like, you know, fingering my girlfriend. Right. Um, <laughs> I knew that would turn you all off. Um... <laughs> but but that you know so but you have an extra layer because you are performing for and this is where I mean I have feelings about this you're performing for people who do not support actually put money where it it affects LGBTQ people against LGBTQ. You know, they give money to organizations. They uh, vote for candidates. They support candidates who are against LGBTQ. And I just, I know that you are trying to make a living and these people get your jokes. But was, did you ever feel like, you fucking. No. I, to be, I'm being honest. I'm not being chutzpah to you. I'm telling you, No. I get up in front of the audience. I see the I see the audience. I do what has to be done. I get them to laugh. I feel so blessed I can do that. And by the way, I have a better time than anybody else. When I'm on stage and I'm having a better time than anybody else. And, you know, again, my career has changed to me doing theaters where they're buying a ticket to see me. Right. From where I used to be brought in to an event. Right, right. Right? So, so now, they know what to expect. But... But now you look out and you see Hasidic people, you see uh, young Israel Yama, because you see completely irreligious right. Jews and and Sephardic and Ashkenazi, and they it's they, they don't care, they don't care. The ones that care and it's a problem for them, they're not coming out to the show. 
They're not. It's amazing because they did care. And, you know, when I was, uh, it, I noticed that they, they did care. And, they, and I, I don't know. It could you be because I'm a also, woman. You, you, yeah. you do curse when you're on stage. Yeah. They care more about that than they do about you fingering your girlfriend. Right. They don't want to hear the F and the S word. Okay, but I grew up in New Jersey, and that's part, that's like and and the. I grew up in okay? New Jersey. I, that is true. Uh, I, yeah, but you know what my mother used to say? Judith, why do you have to curse so much? Bill Cosby never cursed in his act, okay? <laughs> I also didn't drug and rape women. So, um, but by the way, I did ask for coffee, nothing. Just so you know. What it's like, this is what it's like it's to Mashiach be Because it's Mashiach energy. You have to believe in the coffee. Um, you can't just, yeah. coffee doesn't just show up. It's delicious. Um, it's getting close to your curfew, I, caffeine curfew, too. Shut up. Too. I know. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so you were in this unique position because you were doing stand-up at the clubs yeah. and you were doing these Jewy gigs, right? And, and, and hot guys all at the same time. Okay, I don't, I don't, I don't need to know that. No. I, to know. I would really do like a synagogue gig, come into the city and do, uh, and do um, the comedy cellar, where it's like, you know, a regular audience. I remember one week, I'll never forget this one week I had on my calendar. It was so insane. It was like a, a Hasidic organization, uh, and a not so religious organization, the comedy cellar, and then BET's Comic View. Uh, I was one of two a non-black comedians that was on the, did I say that right? That was on the, on the, on the no, lineup. You can't say black anymore. I don't know what you can say yeah, anymore, yeah. but there was two white comedians. I was one of them. Right. And there were 60 other comedians that were not white. That and were people of color. Of color, okay. Yes. And they, and that was uh, on the same week. And that was, I just need to see the audience a little bit and I, and I, I know what I gotta do. Right. That's it. That's my special is called Know Your Audience. That's coming oh, out. I have so, that. Yes, I yes. have that in here. Um, the thing that you were doing was, uh, I remember when you would come out in the cl clubs in New York, you'd be, oh, Modi's talking about his, his you know. Never. Never spoke about a girlfriend. No, no, his boyfriend, oh. I'm saying. You oh. were out in the clubs in New York, yeah. and yet you were doing these, like, really orthy, the fat, and they had no idea because they didn't run in the same circles. Right. Right. So you were. But when, but now, now when they did find out, right. they didn't give a damn. I so don't it's true. Get it's true. It. They, I, okay, yes. I, I know where you're going. I see. I see where you're going. Okay, I'm performing for these orthodox audiences, but don't forget, I'm not living with them. So I'm performing for a, a yeshiva in Flatbush, right? A, you know, and I don't live there. My kids don't go to that school. I I'm done. I disappear. Um, the great comic, they, 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 they heard that night. We had a great time. I wasn't in their world, you know? Right, right. But I am in their world. Any, any, any Syrian Jews think I'm Syrian. Hasidic Jews think I'm one of them. The Ashkenazi think I'm Ashkenazi. Sephardi think I'm Sephardi. Everyone thinks yeah. I'm them, which is great. It's a great feeling. It's a great way to know your audience. And, uh, but they, they, I wasn't in their world like that. But do you think, as a lesbian, yes. I, uh, you know, I had a really hard time. I would, as a lesbian. I would be booked. No, I booked. I did every Jewish gig in the entire world. I like. I did. I was the out. I've always been an outspoken, proud Jew. Right. Um, I never. Thank you. I, I mean, I'd go to Alabama and talk about my Jewish mo I, mother. I was like, and I would get criticized constantly. The, you know, I, I remember I did the Tonight Show and a woman from the forward was like, she's promoting a stereotype. I'm like, I'm not promoting a stereotype. I'm doing my mother. That's exactly what she said. Right. And that's how she said it. Yep. If you think that's a stereotype, that's on you. But I'm literally talking about my Jewish mother in the middle of nowhere where they have no idea what a Jew is. Right. Um, and I'm doing, I'm, I'm doing, you know, the Jewish National Fund and the Jewy rich women, the Lions of Judah and Jew, Jew, Jew and Jew, you know. And, you know, then it's, they, I, they realize I'm a lesbian or they find out, you know, they see a special I did. And it's, it's, well, I don't know. I don't know if, you know, I was fine before. Could you not talk about that? Or did, it, it was really disheartening because I was the same person. I was the same person and the same comedian. And, and getting laughs. And right. You, and you, yeah, and they, I, so you had a very different experience than me. Do you think it's because you're male? 
No, I no, do. I, I really don't. wonder that. It, it, I don't. I don't know. I. I. We. When Leo, my husband, said we need to control the narrative of you coming out, and we spoke with Variety magazine. Right. She did a whole piece. This. He's like in my DMs sees this woman who's a writer for Variety, who's a huge fan, and he says, "You want to come to Modi's show? He'll be in L.A." We sit. We said she came to the show. She comes over afterwards. You, love you, da da da. And then Leo goes, "I'm his husband," and her jaw dropped. And she did a whole. She did a whole article on on me. And then we did a whole bunch of articles in the Jewish. Uh, world so we can control rather than did you know and, and it all came out very very positive and i still get calls and bookings for all kinds of very jewish organizations and so that's yeah so i get, love that yeah i mean i have we, to, we had two different experiences yeah i mean i, have I don't to think say, it's because i'm a male you don't I you think don't think the orthodox community embraced you more because he's a orthodox man. yes first of all it's anything with a woman like that they have a woman they right can't, they can't hear women oh singing oh my god oh uh, uh, Henry, thank you. That's my son, Henry. Thank yes. you. Nice Jewish boy. Please marry a Jew. Please marry a Jew. Please marry a Jew. Please marry a Jew. Please, 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 please. Um, thank you, Henry. <laughs> please marry a Jew. Um, what is the amount of work that has to go into what you have to do right now? I didn't. I didn't what ask for that? the. It's a drip thing. It's a very. It's apparently it's very excellent coffee. Yeah, it drips right in. Very I love nice. this place. I, I don't know. I, I it's it, it's, it's just it's so. So the answer is yes. You did probably. They, it's harder for an Orthodox audience to, to people organizing the event to bring a woman, and and you curse. I I you gotta and, stop with the cursing. But you do. Right. So it's the big problem. It's a big problem on the on an Orthodox room that you cannot curse. I, I do can't. a lot of shows. Where I do not curse. Where I'm. Oh, you, so you 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 can do not. Oh curse my them. God! Oh. I'm in the bima. I have the Torah behind right. me. Okay, yes. Okay. Oh, I, I do not I... curse. They're always like, you know, it's, she's got to be clean. I'm like, really? Just Hello? so you know, I've done shows with Judy. I remember being in the back of Caroline's uh, comedy club, uh, and it was a corporate event. And they came there and they told us, "Hi, it's a corporate event, and it's whatever the Morgan Stanley's whatever merger acquisition division." And the in the front row is the vice president. She's a lesbian, and we prefer nothing to be mentioned about it. Judy comes on, no. looks her in the face, and says, "So you eat pussy?" No, I did. Literally, and it wasn't once, it wasn't twice, it was a few times. Whatever you tell her not to do, she will do. And don't tell me I'm wrong. No, I don't tell me I'm. I'm I was not there. saying you're wrong. Okay. I'm saying that they gave it's me. It's in the context. No. Uh. No. Um, no, this is what happened. They gave me a list of things I wasn't allowed to say or talk about, right? I, was I hosting? I think no, I was. Hosting. I was. Br I brought you up, and, and, and I brought nobody the list. knows how to manage silence on stage better than Judy Gold. <laughs> so she gets up there like this, and just and they just they just they just see they're just taking her in, and then she just turns to her. So you eat pussy <laughs> in front of the entire office. Her whole office knows she's a lesbian. She's probably kind of in the closet. I read the entire list of things yeah. that I wasn't allowed to do. And did all of and them. And then I, they were like, do not talk to anyone. Do not pick anyone out. And I was like, oh, what's your name? Oh, my God, I'm sorry. That was my whole set. I just did exactly what they said I wasn't supposed to do. <laughs> Don't tell a comedian what they can and cannot do uh, uh, on stage. And or, I wasn't getting or, paid that much. Or yeah. tell the comedian, don't look in the women's eyes and you'll get right. a fat check. Right. I get can, more pleasure. I, I work with I you. I get more pleasure from I know being you oppositional. Do. Um, okay. When did you know it was time to quit that Merrill Lynch and go for this, you know, dream of... I was at Merrill Lynch and I was doing well and I kept trying to leave and they kept like bringing me what, with whatever, um, they kept giving me positions that was easier to take, um, to, to, to have more vacation and be able to leave for the weekends, to do road gigs. And then um, I left, left, and I'll give you again, Mashiach Energy, they were doing layoffs. And I said to the, uh, to, to, to the boss, because I was gonna go on tour for a few dates with Neil Sadaka. 
Love Neil. And so I knew, I said, I really want to go on tour with him for, for, this, for this, uh, this bout he had in New Jersey. And I, I went into the guy's office and I said to him, um, I'm, I, I really do need to quit this time. And he says, guess what? Earlier today, we found that we have to have eight layoffs. I'm laying you off. And he laid and you me got off. unemployment too. It was Cobra and this and oh it was, my G dash D. Oh that's my God. not fair. It was. I could not believe. Like I had no. Idea. Then the woman from I get to my desk and the woman from HR calls me and she goes, "You have a year of insurance. You have half your salary for the next year. You have blah 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 blah. We'll still do the ten percent of, of into your tax and into your. They buy you stock and right, right. yeah, which went nowhere and. Uh, and but it was that was and, and and someone's job was saved, and that was that. But that's when I knew I wanted to go on tour. <laughs> like, yeah, that was, yeah, but I was already working. I already had um, a steady flow of income. I was very, I, very, you very are lucky. the luckiest. You're really lucky. Yeah. It's annoying. It's annoying. Cause I'm not. If you if you keep saying that, you won't be. <laughs> it's it doesn't. You know what? I'm sick of that shit. No. I get, Get out. If you keep saying you're fat, then you'll be fat. If you keep saying that, it's, it doesn't matter. It doesn't. Do you really believe that that matters? One, a hundred percent. What you speak happens. Are you crazy? That's why I take things out of my bits. Oh my God, watch George Carlin's last set. Right before he died. Watch what he says, and then he dies. A few weeks later. Be very careful with your really? words. Are oh God. so strong. Oh my God, the Torah, the Torah, the Torah, uh, uh, you, you, know, you know, abracadabra? Mm -hmm. You know, when the magician says, yeah. abracadabra, and it's a goat or whatever the hell they do on, I hate magic. And uh, <laughs> I, don't, don't you hate magic? We get, we'll go back to that. But, but it, it, abracadabra comes from Adabil Vikayim. I will say and it will happen. That's from the Torah. Right. I, I, you know, what you say happens. I hate magic. I can't believe. You hate that magic I, too? No, that I just bought uh, Oceanfront property. On Cape Cod, uh, this five million dollar home. I just can't believe I just did that. I, because I have a big windfall coming from my new film that I'm exactly. filming. Um, yes. Keep oh, going. it's just amazing. And believe it and keep saying it. I can't believe I got ten Netflix specials. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> um Insane, and, yeah. they're, and they're all amazing. One, yeah, they're well, well. It's one every two years. Yeah. So, and I can do whatever I want. They said I can do whatever I want. I, do it. It can be as long as I want it to be. Um, Make sure to do that whole thing before the special, where they sit in the green room with everybody that they know. Right, and Ugh. they all just sit around and. Uh, I hate that. I know. Just start your special. No one wants to see you sitting in the green room drinking with somebody. When you think about businesses that are selling through the roof, sure, you think about a great product, a cool brand, and brilliant marketing. But an often overlooked secret is actually the businesses behind the business, making selling simple. For millions of businesses, that business is Shopify. Nobody does selling better than Shopify. They're the home of the number one checkout on the planet. And the not-so-secret, ShopPay that boosts conversions up to 50%, meaning way less carts going abandoned and way more sales happening. So if you're into growing your business, your commerce platform better be ready to sell wherever your customers are scrolling or strolling, on the web, in your store, in their feed, and everywhere in between. Businesses that sell more, sell on Shopify. Upgrade your business and get the same checkout Allbirds and Skims use. Sign up for your $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash start selling, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash start selling to upgrade your selling today. Shopify.com slash start selling. You talk a lot about the difference between Sephardim and Ashkenazim, okay? Yeah. In your act. I grew up very Ashkenazi. Shocking. I had no, I would never, I would never. I thought you were Moroccan, at least Algiers maybe, Algiers. 
you're a Sephardic. Do you? No, I'm yeah. fully Ashkenazi. You are? You look so Sephardic. No, we, I speak Yiddish fluent. Are you kidding me? Why do I make fun of Ashkenazis and not Sephardic? Because I'm Ashkenazi. If I went on stage and made fun of Sephardic people, I'd be murdered. <laughs> and it wouldn't be cute. But you make fun of that. It's it's you have here's to find. What, here's the thing yeah. I don't get yeah. on Passover. Okay. No, I mean, could you imagine how much? No, I gotta put this in here and turn yeah. it. What do you guys do when you have a chas uh, a comic with arthritis? Wait, I have to have a sip of my coffee. Let me help you here. Yeah. Okay. It Bruch literally came with a. Shahakol. What is it? Shahakol. Shahakol. Nia. Nia. Bidvaro. Bidvaro. Maccabi. 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 Oh, so good, right? Yeah, it's good. Uh, I, love our, I love coffee. He loves coffee and he hates magic. That's what we learned tonight. With I Lord. don't understand why Sephardim yeah. get to eat peas and rice. During oh. Passover. It's not imagine? fair. I it is no and idea. beans. They can have beans, peas, and rice. I don't know. And we know. can't. I don't understand. It's a religion. Why do they get to eat that? Anyone? Any rabbis here? It's Any? custom. Do you, have to, you don't have to look out in the audience. I'm right here. <laughs> well, I decided I can eat rice and peas on uh, You can also eat Pork and ham, if you want. On on you do. No, I can't. So I can't. we are not the chosen people. In case you're wondering, we're the choosing people. You yeah. choose what works for you. Yeah, you want to cover your hair and wear pants. You want to do this and your elbow, but you're wearing a, a, a mini. You, everybody does whatever they want. You want to wear a yarmulke only when you eat in a kosher restaurant, and it's the craziest thing we have. No, it's insane. We're the, it, choo we're, we're the choosing you religion. Don't, you don't think other religions are choosing religions? I don't think I, they I'm have gonna it. I'm going to go, I'm going to have a pulpit and, and talk about how much I hate gay people, and then I'm going to have no. a young boyfriend waiting for me backstage. But I'm talking about in, in terms of, of Bapoil, in, in action. Right. You know, someone who's Catholic just goes to church. You go to church, and then you have to believe that gays are evil. That's all you have to do, and you're Catholic. Right. You don't have to go home and make hamotzi and, you know? Do you, um... <laughs> oh, the coffee's kicking in. Ah! Yes. The Shiach energy, baby. Yes. yes. Um, so you got interviewed by this rabbi. Okay. Oh, yeah. Um, 14, 18, something like that? I don't know when the fuck it was. Let me see. I had, oh, I meant when the heck it was. David Bashevkin. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And? And I just want to read a comp. Like, this pissed me off so much. I want to see how you react to this. Go ahead. Let me hear. In a recent podcast hosted by Rabbi David Bashevkin, Modi, who is married to a non-Jewish man, mm -hmm. says coming out was Mashiach energy. But Shevkin, who teaches at Yeshiva University, NCSY, and writes for Mishpach, Mishpacha, yeah. did not push back at this confusion of values. It is unfortunate that he fails to see the danger of promoting someone who openly lives in violation of the Torah and seemingly believes that his coming out will somehow bring the final redemption. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How much shit like this do you get? Oh, we get cute. I love it. I can, and I can, I can, I can... I can I can back at them with no problem. I have no problem with them at all. Uh, it's um, and Bashevkin didn't push back because it was an interview. You don't push back, and right. um, I don't know what his real thoughts are about it is. But I I mar it was Mashiach energy because it's the gay kids when they go to their parents, mom, dad, look, I'm gay. You know, like that comic you went to go see last night. I'm like that. I'm 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 like him, just not as funny as him. Uh, but. <laughs> Oh it, yeah! It, so uh, it enabled kids to to many kids wrote wrote to us and wrote to uh, to us to me and Leo. I don't read my emails, uh, and so Leo showed me that all these kids are writing to us, telling us that it made easier for them to come out to their parents. It made it it gave him, you know, someone who they their parents love. Modi. Yeah, that's Do Mashiach you, I energy. Would, this happened to me, you know, like in the '90s, and then these kids wait for me after the show. Right. 
and they say, I didn't know I could be Jewish and gay and have a family. Right. And, 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 you know, you see, and they're like 30 years old now. Yeah. And parents saying, my daughter, I, I never forget this one parent. I was in Florida. She's like, uh, I was doing 25 questions for a Jewish mother, which was one of my off-Broadway shows based on interviews I did with Jewish mothers. And, um, and this mother is waiting. She's waiting for me. She's like, my daughter's gay. I don't know what to do. What, are, what, am I, what do I do? I'm like, nothing. You do nothing. You had your daughter. She was born perfect. It's not about you. Right. It's not about, but you do. The representation is so important. Yep. And I remember when I was doing 25 Questions, uh, and that was in, what, 2007, people would come and bring their parents to the show and then come out to them afterwards. And people... Wow would uh, would write me letters and, and say, I, I stopped practicing Judaism and I'm going to start again because I didn't realize I could do. And you really don't realize the impact you have of course. on people. And then yet, you, the, you're, you're performing for these motherfuckers. Okay, so... They're not motherfuckers. The ones that are motherfuckers are not coming to the show. You, you, you put, change your speech. It's not. They're not motherfuckers. They're not. They're not the. The ones coming to the show are she's, not. She's got me cursing. Isn't that yeah. horrible? I know. Aren't I the worst? Um, I got Florence Henderson to say the word cunt. No. Yes, I did. <laughs> I swear to God, it was the greatest. <laughs> Look at them all. I didn't know it was going to be like this. I. She is disgusting. Um, <laughs> no, I'm just saying when you do the privates where you know what their political, you know, their affiliations are, like, you, you don't, you're just like, oh, I'm getting my check, I don't care. It's not like that, but it's not, they're not, their main goal in life is not to destroy the gays. When you do organizations, uh, it's for charities, it's for, they're raising money for cancer, right, right, they're right. raising money for Israel, for ambulances, for for uh, hospitals. They're not sitting there, we're raising money to kill the gays. It's right. not like that. It's not their main, if you look at a regular Jewish audience, their main thing is Israel. I, their I agree. main I agree. thing is Israel. I do, th I do a lot of that. I, yeah. So in your head, in your head, you, because of your speech, think that they are all anti-gay and want to kill you, and, and they, but they're not. They're just, they're there for this event. And so you get into your head before you get on stage. No, I, I, I am, you know, I've heard you say I'm more Jewish than I am gay. And yes. I, I, people have asked me this question is the most annoying question. Are you more Jewish or are you more gay? I am a Jew. My body is Jewish. My hair is Jewish. The way I think, what I eat, uh, how I speak, everything about, I am a Jew. It's my DNA and I'm gay. That's who I love. That's my sexual orientation. But I am, first and foremost, a Jew. Okay. And I will stick up for the Jews. I mean, I am at this point now where people who I abhorred politically are sticking up for the Jews. Yes. And you know what? God bless them. Yes. I have a new, I, my eyes have yes. been opening because... As Elisa, my lover, says, my first thing is, are they going to defend us? Are they going to protect right. us? And that is number one. And right. I, I'm i going to have to agree with that, that we're in this situation now where I only want to be around people who believe Israel has a right to exist and defend itself. 100%. And Jews are not the enemy. We are two-tenths of 1% of the population. And we have contributed so much to this world. You know what? If you hate Jews so much, live without all the contributions they've made, okay? And right. see how your life is. Yeah. But yes. I, so I have had, I have had a change. I've had a change. It happens. Right. But you, okay. One last thing. You just, you, you've twice you've performed for APAC, and never. No, I I've thought never it was for APAC. Oh, I thought you just performed and Mike Johnson was there. Yes. And you had to follow Mike Johnson, who hates the gays. And the year then before, I'll be done with the gay topic. I know you're all like, I the gay topic. Okay, but yeah. was there any point where you wanted to just... I performed. <laughs> Someone yelled, kill him? Yeah. So I performed. I got a phone call. And Leo obviously manages everything, and with our touring agent, and we we got it, and we didn't really realize it's like what, it, what it was. You know? 
Yeah. Oh, that's a step. No, she yeah. didn't manage him. She managed him. No, Sonny did everything. Oh, and then did he? Yeah. No, but he sang with her on stage. I know. Oh, yeah. He doesn't do it. I well. got you, babe. Hey. I, I got, got you, babe. babe. Okay. Seth Rudetsky. Um, no one knows who the hell that is. Yeah, they know Seth. You know Seth. Key really? change. Um, okay. No? You yes, got that they one? Yes. Know All him. Right. Tell us about the Mike Johnson thing. Okay. So, so. We get a phone call to perform for the it's a thousand Jews in Las Vegas. Uh, it's called Las the Re- Vegas. It's called the Republican Jewish Coalition. Okay, and they, as Henry would say, you would have taken the gig. And I, I'm actually going to request you for next year for that. It's a thousand Jews. It's a thousand Jews. And when I tell you money, you can smell it in the room. These are Jews that are putting up 20 to $30 million for whoever they want as a candidate so that they have their cell phone when they're in office. And don't have to pay taxes. Yes. Whatever, for whatever reason or whatever they need. But just the vibe of the room. Right. It's set up how like many a, How many women versus, and men? How many? It was 50-50. It was there, oh, everybody's really? there with their wives. Who did you look at? Ugh. Okay, go ahead. It wasn't that, know your audience. It wasn't that at all. Okay. So they the year before... The year before, not this past year, the year before, all the candidates came out to say that they're running. Nikki Haley announced she's running for president. Yeah. Uh, Mike, uh, Mike Pence, the da da, uh, DeSantis, all of them. And, and, and then at the end, here's Modi. <laughs> Literally. They all come on, they all come on, and I did my act, and it wasn't, I didn't do a gay, I just did like, I did the room, and I told him at the end, hey, you know, it says Republican Jewish Coalition, but the main thing is Jewish. Make sure whoever you are bringing into the White House has Mashiach energy. That's how I ended the show, okay? And then they all were like, oh my God! But I will tell you, I will tell you, last year and this year, when they got up and spoke in front of this audience, they knew their audience. No one ever mentioned abortion. No one mentioned gay. No one mentioned guns. They all mentioned Israel. They all, they all got up there and they had like that sizzle reel. You know, Nikki Haley was the UN well, ambassador, da, da, da. Right. and she never met a mayor, and during the Israel, and she, you moved the, the embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem, and then Mike Pence, he was so proud to be a part of that, and they got only Israel. No one mentioned anything else. It was a single issue audience. And this year, the event was a week after October 7th. They, and Mike Johnson just got, Mike Johnson, whose wife has one of those camps to convert the gay kids. Yeah. You, you know those camps? That they, yeah. They take, they take she the has gay a kids. conversion therapy camp. Yeah, they yeah. take the gay kids and make yeah. them gayer. I don't know if you've ever seen yeah. the documentaries on yeah. these gay camps. The yeah. kids come out flaming. <laughs> flaming. So they had all of them speaking. Donald Trump, I'll tell you a funny story. So they, all the candidates came out from one side yeah. with, their, with their little sizzle reel, you know? And they came out and then, hi, Nikki Haley and Israel has to be defending. What happened is Hamas is this, da 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 but, but, And they're all just going but crazy. Yes, yes. DeSantis comes out. I done, Israel, bye. And that's why I, any college in Florida that doesn't give, da, bye, I cut their money off and boom. And, and then Trump comes from the other side. And doesn't come out with a scissor, it comes out with that song, I'm proud to be an I'm American. Proud to be an American. So when yeah. I came on, I did the same thing. I thought the guy, give me the song, and he comes oh, out. No. He's so insane. Okay. He comes out with the song and he just stands like this. He goes, like this. Yeah. And, and, like, and even when they stop clapping, he's still going. He's like, like this. And the song's going. It's so unhinged. <laughs> It's so unhinged. But then he came out and he's like, you know what they're talking about when they're talking about the uh, Abraham Accords and they're talking about, they, all the cans are talking about what they did for the Abraham Accords and for getting the embassy down to Jerusalem and for the Golan and the other, there's one other issue. Yeah. And he goes, I was the president. <laughs> he's like, they're all selling what they did during my thing. I mean, he's, he's completely unwell. Let's not kid ourselves. Oh, wow. I thought he unwell. really had it together. But he's, um, he's, but that, all of those candidates are, at, right. they, but they're, they not, were they're not their juggling politicians. their questions. They're yep. all in front of that audience. Then they'll go to the gun lobby and they'll be like, guns, yeah, guns, 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 guns,
But but they when they spoke about the issue that these people cared about, which is what you care about, Israel, right. they were on it. I don't know if Biden even knows the war broke out. <laughs> he doesn't. He but does. He does. Uh, it's just, uh, you can't be uh, that hateful. I'm He's not. not I'm not. Know. Give it to him. The man, his whole career to be where he is. Good for him. Uh, it, but he's not there. He's you know what? One there. of the hostages. I, I, I believe no. me. I don't want any of these candidates. They're horrible. Well, they're terrible. They're but everything. All the choices. We. I'd rather have the waitress that brought me the coffee to be the president. <laughs> to be honest, I'll tell you who should be president of the United States of America. I'll tell you. The, I'll tell you right now who should be at the Comedy Cellar. I don't know if you know the Comedy Cellar downtown. Oh God, just fucking. Oh my God. There's like five rooms, and there's one woman who's a manager of it, Liz. Oh, Liz is great. She. Liz Furiati. Liz she should be president she of the United States. She should be United States. States of America. Okay. In, like, in a heartbeat, she should be. I just want to say, on behalf of our current president, who, again, I have mixed feelings about a lot of things. He, one of the hostages' parents said that he called them, and he was sh as sharp as a tack. So, um... Yeah. I, you, you got, like, this vitriol about, you know, oh, he doesn't know what to... Look, he, he, he is who he is. He is a stutterer. No, he, he is. is. He's a stutterer. So am I. So, so a, I know. So and a he's lot got a of his... Bit... You know, you, you see him, like, <clears throat> sometimes. I don't know and... if you... I, so I, I, in my last podcast with... Uh, my podcast is called And Here's Modi, and I had on Arthur Luxemburg, a trial lawyer who also is a stutterer. And when you stutter like me... You have tricks. Biden just is too. He's he forgot his tricks. Right. He for, when like when when I say the word anything begins with an M L or S, I can't start my sentence with those letters. So when so, someone says to me, "What's your name?" I can't just say Modi, right? So, Hi, I'm Modi, because the high gets it going. Right. Right. And I just say I can't just say Modi. That's why I just said Modi because it's already I'm already flowing in. You understand? So there's tricks we have. And Biden is just forgot the tricks. Right. Well, he's 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 grasping, you know, when well, I'm Well, he's angry doing a hundred things at once. Yeah, yeah, I get well, it. Yeah. He's 80. Right. Yeah. My mom is 80. Okay, but there's young 80s. Like Fauci is a young 80. You know, he's, he's running 80? around. He's right. There are young 80s. Fauci, you Are you kidding me? <laughs> Fauci. That's who you went for. I'm just saying, I he might be older than 80. There yes. are young 80. Yes. Cher is, what? Cher. Cher is 80. Okay, what is she, 78, 77? 77. 77. She's the same age as of Trump. Of course, all the ones that knew Seth Rudetsky knew right. Cher's <laughs> age. Thank you so much for listening to part one of my live podcast uh, with Modi. Uh, Kill Me Now is produced by Laura Vogel. It is edited by Colin Schmeling. It is marketed and scheduled and everything else by uh, Brittany Joe Soward's Richmond. Um, follow me on Twitter. Follow me. No, don't follow me on Twitter because I, I, I don't. It's X, whatever it is. I just do the Instagram stuff and I like threads. I mean, I do. I'm still on the X Twitter shit, but I really hate him. Uh, so I'm not happy about it. Also, please go to my website because I am performing near you. I'm performing Christmas Day at Stand Up New York in New York City. In January, as I said, I uh, the 12th, I'm at City Winery in New York. On the 13th, I'm at City Winery in Philadelphia. On January 19 and 20, I'm at Off Cabot Comedy Club in Beverly, Massachusetts. So, come to my shows. We need to laugh. I want to wish you all the happiest uh, of holidays. Please be safe. Please travel safe. Please be kind. Please, if anyone says anything anti-Semitic, please speak up. Stop ignoring it. We need you. And we're not going to shut the fuck up either. So, there you go. And I just appreciate you all. I don't know who's still listening, but I appreciate it. I really do. I, I know I know some people listen to the end. I know a lot of people. Uh, whatever. I love you all. Thank you so much for listening. And as we always say, 
So long. G -g 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 my dad works in B2B marketing. He came by my school for career day and said he was a big ROAS man. Then he told everyone how much he loved calculating his return on ad spend. My friends still laugh at me to this day. Not everyone gets B2B, but with LinkedIn, you'll be able to reach people who do. Get a $100 credit on your next ad campaign. Go to linkedin.com slash results to claim your credit. That's linkedin.com slash results. Terms and conditions apply. LinkedIn, the place to be to be.